Joining us now on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline, our second guest today is former BYU basketball standout defensive specialist Jackson Emery. Jackson, welcome back to the show. Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing today? We're fantastic. Awesome. And uh, we're gathering that you may have an opinion on what has happened between BYU and Utah, given <laughs> your past <laughs> in being a participant in this game. So let's just throw out the softball, man. What do you think of the cancellation between BYU and Utah? Well, yeah, no, that is uh, it's kind of been the, the dinner topic for the last, you know, probably week or so. Huh? Um, you know, yeah, it all boils down to, I mean, you know, the first thing that you got to do is you, you got to take off, take off your BYU hat, take off your Utah hat, and just put on your sports fan hat. And when you, you put that on, there's no bias, and you just look at it and say, you know what, this is a shame. You know, you look at a competitive game as BYU and Utah, you look at the competitive sports we have, you have good programs on both sides. And to really take that away, um, especially – uh, with the tradition of what we have here in Utah, I mean it's a, it's a shame. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a power move by you know Dr. Hill and Coach Kristoviak. To I don't know if it is kind of a political move to say you know BYU we're done with you or you know whatever the situation may be. But you know I mean ultimately I feel like you know as sports fans I mean we're 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 ashamed and we're we're bummed that this happened. Is there any reason in your mind BYU and Utah shouldn't play? No, you know the, the whole idea of you know it being too too physical or dangerous. I mean that's ridiculous. I mean to me, I I never felt when I played in Utah. Maybe it was because we they weren't that good or we beat them up every year that like my life was in general or my health was you know in jeopardy at all. You know I felt like everything was fine in terms of being able to play on a high level and to, you know, compete at a high level and compete with some high intensity. Uh, even when we played UNLV, San Diego State, New Mexico, those are intense physical games, bodies flying everywhere, people talking smacks. But at the end of the day, it was a competitive game. And, you know, we kept our emotion, you know, emotions intact. And, I mean, that's really what it comes down to is, you know what, there might be elbows, there might be, you know, arms thrown here or there. You might, you know, be a hard box out, you know, whatever Kristoyak was talking about. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's looking to injure anyone. Um, things happen in the heat of the moment, you know, especially with my brother and, you know, Marshall and a couple others that have happened the last couple of years. But I don't think any more than what's happened against other teams that we've played against. How hard is your brother Nick taking this news? You know, <laughs> kind of funny i mean he's he's kind of still in shock of like man this this thing's not going away he's like i screwed up my bad like i'm trying to move on i think we should move on i think you know a part of the healing process is to just get on to the next game get through it and just say listen like that's not who i am that's not what i do but unfortunately that's not what it's going to happen is that this is going to be, I mean, it's like BYU plays three years from now. Now the highlights of the last time BYU and Utah played, this happened, and that's going to continue to pop up. So he's a little bummed in terms of that, just that he wants to put this to rest. I think the other thing is just as a competitor, um, he wants to play Utah. Um, he knows they're a great school. They have a great team, um, wants to play against people he played against in high school. But, uh, you know, so as a competitor, he's also bummed. But he also knows, you know what, they're out of my control. I, I just got to focus on, you know, who I play and what Coach Rose asked me to do. And it's unfortunate because Nick's had a good freshman season so far, and, and, and part of the spotlight on him is for that one incident. Um, has he had any conversation with anyone on the Utah coaching staff or players after that game that you know of? <laughs> He hasn't, you know, he, he thought it was sufficient just to release a general statement to the public um, so that it was to the BYU fans, mm -hmm. to all sports fans, to media, Utah fans in general. Um, you know, I think he, I mean, we did talk about maybe reaching out to Utah, but uh, I mean, I, he, I just said, you know, leave it up to Coach Rose, leave it up to, you know, BYU in general, what they recommend. But I think that everyone felt that by releasing that public statement, it was sufficient. Um, obviously, Coach Kristoyak felt otherwise, that there was, quote, a lack of remorse, um, which I don't know what else he wanted. I don't know if he wanted to, Brandon Taylor to get a get well soon card or like, <laughs> like some flowers. Like, some flowers? I, I, 
I never got anything from Marshall, so maybe I, should I be offended? You know, it makes you start to think about those things. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, look, if you have to apologize for every elbow, punch, knee, pinch, whatever goes on in the game, man, you, you better get those thank you cards out and those get well soon cards out because uh, you're going to be sending a whole lot of those if you're a competitor. Former BYU basketball star Jackson Emery with us on BYU Sports Nation. Simple question. Has it become too heated, Jackson? You know, I, I do. I do agree to some extent with you know maybe not as much the players. I, I feel like players, yeah, there's definitely some competition, but I feel like with the fans, there's definitely some ugliness to it in terms of. I mean, when you go to work, go to church, go just on social media, I think there's probably some, definitely some ugliness to it. Um, to, to measure if it's more intense than it was 15 years ago, it's a little difficult um, just because. Social media amplifies that. Um, it's in your face 24-7. I mean, you could be here at work, and you're like, oh, I'm going to check Facebook and Twitter, and all of a sudden you have friends fighting about who's dirty and who's this and who's that, or you have people on Twitter just attacking each other. Um, 15, 20 years ago, you didn't have that. I mean, it was kind of you go to the game, you go to work, and it was just kind of that. So it, it amplifies it a little more, I believe. But overall, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't live in Alabama. I don't see Alabama, Auburn. I don't live in North Carolina. It's North Carolina Duke. But I assume it's just as intense, if not more intense in some cases. Doesn't this make the situation um, exactly what they're talking about, though, toxic and venomous? It, it, isn't it going to become worse if they don't play and then they pick it up? <laughs> I, think it, I think it has that ability to. Because, I mean, if you have kind of that – a build-up period where you haven't played them for a while and there's these, you know, this anger between coaches and not playing or playing the game and uh, and then the fans are angry because they haven't played in a while. And, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I didn't feel like the football game this year was any more intense than it was the last, you know, time they played. But uh, maybe that was just coaches doing a really good job of coaching their players. I mean, obviously there was comments made, you know, with, you know, at the the dinner or the banquet, whatever that was, as well as, you know, pregame things being said. But that's just, that rolls with rival, rivalries. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. I think both coaches do a good job at, you know, coaching their teams and making sure their te teams are well composed. But uh, hopefully, you know, this is just a one-year deal, and then they figure out a contract after that. Follow him at Jackson Emery 04, BYU's all time steals leader. Jackson Emery with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk about the current status of what BYU basketball is actually doing on the floor. 102 points in a win against San Francisco. The offense looks very efficient right now, but the Cougars give up 92, so they basically needed all 102 of those to beat the Dons. What does BYU need to do to get better defensively? Yeah, you know, that's been kind of the. The question the last several years, um, you know, when, you know, Jimmer left and you know, when Jimmer and I left, you know, everyone talked about how do we replace Jimmer with scoring? And, you know, you, you look at, you know, not enough Jackson Emery replacement talk. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's been no Jackson Emery replacement talk. I feel <laughs> a little offended by that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, as you look at, you know, when Jimmer left, you know, they put in Noah, they put in Brandon, then they put in Tyler, and then they put in Kyle. I mean, you've had offensive production. That hasn't been a question. I mean, in some cases, actually, they I mean, if you look at statistically, they've actually been scoring more as a team. Um, but as you look at defensively in the last couple of years, I mean, my senior year, we were averaging, I was just looking up some stats, you know, about 67 uh, points in terms of what we were giving up to teams. Um, that shot up to two years ago, 77, and currently is at 73. So, I mean, when you start playing with those numbers, your margin of error starts to decrease because every possession becomes more and more valuable. And we've kind of gotten a mentality. I don't know if it's the players. I don't know if it's the program in general. Of, you know what? You score two, I'll score three. And that's a dangerous mentality to have because when you play teams where you're not shooting as well, you know, maybe at St. Mary's or some of these other teams you played against Utah in the first half um, that are good defensive teams, it doesn't give you that ability to, you know, play well. Um, and especially when you played Colorado, I mean, you go down 15, 20 points to make that deficit up. That's going to be tough. And you've seen that with some of their losses. So I, I think this team – 
needs to buckle down a little more defensively. I think they need to get a little more grit to them and uh, pound out the games. And I'm assuming Gonzaga is going to try to do that to them on Thursday. Jackson, always great to talk to you, my friend. Great insight into the BYU-Utah situation as well as what the Cougars need to do defensively. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. You know, hopefully this is just kind of uh, something in the mirror. We'll move forward. Obviously, there's no nothing anyone can do. Hopefully, Kristoviak has a like an awe moment in the next couple months and says, <laughs> you know what, this is this is dumb. I'm going to get it back on the schedule. I think Coach Rose, uh, Tom Homo, they would welcome that. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, it's a bright future for BYU basketball. Jackson, great to talk to you, man.